Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Charlotte Motor Speedway as we're getting ready for all-star qualifying here for the Budweiser All-Pro Series. Now, Kyle, we're, we're here. We're under the lights. It's going to be just like race conditions. We've got 20 cars out here that are going to take time. What do you think is going to happen, especially with this aero package, which is uh, the same, which, which is like the Super Speedway, which is just good. Oh, it's going to be fun to watch uh, with that with that package especially, and I like that we're doing this at night. You know, got the same conditions that we're probably going to get for the race, so it's going to be a, you know, bit of a practice session. Or even, you know, at least people will see, what you, everybody, will, everybody will get to see how the track conditions are. That's true. See how the track conditions are, plus this will be the first time in the Budweiser All-Pro Series history that these drivers will have to do actual all-star style qualifying and not just like a practice session. So getting down the pit road, uh, full speed, whatever, however speed you can take is going to be interesting. First car out on the racetrack is Trent Dunham. And Trent won the race at Atlanta earlier this season to qualify for this race. Yep, we have 11 first-time winners this season. I can, oh, yeah, first-time winners this season, plus nine drivers that made it in by being the top nine drivers without a win in the point standing. So as you see Trent coming to take the green flag for his first lap, sporting a new, a new sponsor this race, I think for this race only in Monster Energy. Yeah, he usually has uh, Sonic on his car, but he has Monster Energy for this race. Let's see. The most treacherous turns. The most treacherous with this with this package. We've heard a lot of these drivers complain about the cars being really really loose in three and four. So three and four is going to be the turns to watch as he completes his first lap. He will now have to make that four tire pit stop this time by. You know, he's kind of surprised he's running more of a middle to high group. You usually see people, you know, in qualifying, you know, try to hug the bottom as much as they can. Well, at this particular racetrack, uh, the drivers have told me the outside line has a lot more grip. Here he comes down pit right for that pit. Well, boy, nearly hitting the cone there, but gets down there good. Yep, and all these drivers have, have enough runoff time. Each of these drivers will get the very first pit stall at the end of pit road so that gives them enough time to try to time their whenever they need to hit the brakes as the pit, as Trent's pit crew goes to work boy do these cars take forever to get up to speed Heading down off into turn two. This will complete his overall lap time when he comes by across the start finish line again. Off of turn number four. Ooh, he slapped the wall a little bit there. As he completes his lap time, Trent Dunham with a two minute and 14 second point four three zero. Looked like a pretty decent lap until you hit the wall a little bit there at the end. I don't know if that had a whole lot of effect on it, but we'll see. Yep. Trent Dunham. Got a for his first win in the Budweiser All Pro Series this season at Atlanta. It was a while. He kind of broke a bit of a winless record. He didn't. I don't think he won very much in season eight. But uh, he comes down pit road now. I'm going to take this car behind the wall as we get ready for the next car, which I believe it will be the three of Cole Deaver, who actually got into this by winning last week at Dover. Yeah, Cole driving that, driving that a special pay for him, the uh, that gold Dow Chevrolet. 
Same car that you're seeing Austin Dillon run in Speed Weeks this year. Same paint scheme, that is. Yep. We'll have to see what Cole can do. Remember, he, he won at Dover last week. So he was able to last-minute entry into this. See him kind of go a little bit more to a bottom line in three and four there. He also tried the inside line in one and two. These cars are very tight, I also heard, because they try to go full throttle. So, naturally, the car is just a bit tighter as he heads off into three and four here. Now he's going to try the middle line. Completion of his first lap, he'll, uh, I believe he'll be pit, his pit stop will take place this lap, and then it'll... Yep. Pit stop will take place this lap. Be curious to see what kind of route he takes on the pit lane here. Got in there a lot better than Trent did. Yeah, that looked a lot smoother. See how the pit stop goes. Oh, he overshot. Oh, that's gonna hurt him. That's gonna hurt him big time. Can't pit outside the box, otherwise it would have been a DNQ for Full Deaver. But good on him to quickly throw it in reverse. I guess you can say this is, with this being Cole Deaver's second season in the Budweiser All Pro Series, he's still got a bit of a rookiness inside of him. Then again, he's never, I don't think he's ever actually had to try to make a pit stop like this before, so I don't really blame him. As Cole Deaver comes off of turn number four, he's going to grab the checkered flag. And let's see, a 215.04. That's a little bit slower than, uh, than Trent Dunham's time, because, uh, you know, him overshooting, overshooting the pit right there just uh, you know, cost him a little bit right there, and it, and it shows. Yep. So, sec so, so far, second out of two cars for Cole Deaver. He shuts his engine off. He's talking with his crew chief, trying to figure out what they could possibly do if they have at least one more practice session before the, uh, before the All-Star race and the All-Star Open later on. Ooh, I forgot who's up next. It might be the 11. No, or no, it might actually be the 02, I think. See here. Oh, no, it's the 8. Rob Evans. Rookie Rob Evans. Now, remember, he he's, he's one of those nine drivers who got into the All-Star Race by being, by being the first nine people in points without a win. So he's lucky to be here. Probably really excited. Let's see what this rookie can do on his qualifying lap. He's been close to winning a couple of times this season, so it ain't like he just uh, you know flipped his way into this thing. He's been fast. Yeah, he was beat by he was he's the top he's in the top nine of the people without a point or without a win, so he's definitely up in the point standings. Rob's been very consistent. A number eight nationwide Chevy Camaro. Evan Gardner Motorsports. He might actually, I think he's the, so far, until the All-Star Open, he's the only representative. No, I lied. Evan Gardner also has James Qualls in the All or here in the All-Star race as well. I see James Qualls is another of those drivers who are high in points without a win. So two out of four drivers represented so far in the, uh, in the All-Star race. As Rob keeps it down good to the low side as he comes off of 
four to complete his first lap. Keeps it high, and I didn't really hear the tires squealing, so he's definitely on a good run. Well, he looks to be running higher than on it. Uh oh. Oh boy. Oh, Rob Evans backed it into the wall a little bit there. And I think that's it for his lap. Yep, Rob Evans. Evan Gardner Motorsports. Unfortunately, he will not be able to complete his lap, and he will DNQ. But he will still be in the All-Star race. I believe he, he will grab the 20th position. I was just about to say, he looks to be running a little bit higher than everybody else. I guess he got a little bit too high, got up in the loose stuff, and it turned his car around. Yep. Tough like right I, there for uh, Rob Evans. Yeah, and like I said, uh, it's been really loose. They, these drivers in, three, in turns three and four said their car is really, the back end really wanted to step out on them. As we have Jessica Shelton now coming out to make her qualifying run. And I noticed she was staying more on the uh, cement part of the pit road than she, than she did on the asphalt. And that was noticed. I noticed that too. Um, you know, there might be a little bit more... Might be a little bit more grip down there, easier to get the car up to speed. Yep, but we'll definitely see what she can do. Now, if I know Jess, she, I'm sure she's made a, she, she's made qualifying attempts like this before. So, this probably wouldn't be her first rodeo, even though it would be her first time trying to make them in the Budweiser All-Pro Series. I can't imagine. I mean, she's one of the most experienced drivers in this series, so... You would definitely think so. Definitely. Has been, I think she's she's been in the Budweiser All-Pro Series, I think, since the first season. So, yeah, you're right. Definitely one of the more experienced racers in this field. Comes off of turn four. Looks very good. She completes her first lap. She will have to pit this time by. It's one of the things I like about this series. You see a lot of experienced veterans, but you have a lot of a lot of uh, young up and comers as well. It's the perfect mix. Yep, and it's not and it's not imbalanced either. We see rookies go to victory lane. We've seen it before. We've seen it happen. We've even seen it this year with Jack Halleck and a couple of others like uh, JJ Roberts and all of them that we'll see qualify later on. Yes, took a little bit more of a higher line and she dove it off into the pit road. This is probably the only, yeah, this is the only thing they'll be able to come down pit road at top speed, so that, that might be something getting used to. It's all going to come down to her pit crew as well, if they can have a good stop. One falter, and that's time lost on the racetrack. Off pit lane. He doesn't have the benefit of the concrete there because he didn't know, because of the very last pit stall. Very smooth entry into three and four. Comes out of turn number four, and what will her lap be this time as she completes it? Checkered flag. Looked like a solid lap, and she goes to the top of the charts at a 212. Yep, 212.820 for Jessica Shelton. As she as you see, she qualified by winning her way by winning at Richmond. And like you said, top of the board for that number 02 Chevrolet out of S3 Motorsports. And she makes a run down to come back here with her cool-off lap. Budweiser All-Pro Series officials double-checking the racetrack, making sure it's all clear for the next driver to go out. She's got to be ecstatic, though. That was a very fast lap. Yeah, it was. Uh, about, looked like almost two seconds quicker if it... Second and a half, two seconds right there, and here comes her teammate in the zero nine. Mm -hmm. 
Kyle Matthews, again, one of those drivers, top nine and one of the top nine in points without a win. He's that's why he's he's been a lot more consistent this year than he was last year, that's for sure. Yeah, a couple he, of some, he, couple. He, 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 he traded places with his teammate Charles Sanford, who's at the bottom of the points. It's hard to believe right there. Uh, yeah, the 7-9 car has been, you know, like you said, in the top 10 in points, very consistent, been very quick. A couple of runner-up finishes this season, so, um, you know, they've been knocking on the door of victory lane, just haven't been able to get there just yet. Yep, Kyle Matthews takes the green flag to start his qualifying attempt here. Wonder, will he be able to beat out Jessica Shelton? Nearly got the wall there. Nearly got the wall, but you got to be able to arc it into these corners. Comes out of turn number four. He's going to complete his first lap. He's going to have to make a... Uh, Four tire pit stop this time by. He tried to go on the low side. I'm telling you, this low side, just, I don't think the low side in turns one and two has any grip. You've seen drivers try to go off into it, but they just slide right up to that outside line. Which is quite different um, at a track like this. Good entry there on the pit road. Yep, very good entry. Now can he get stopped in time to stop in his pit box? Everything looks smooth on the pit stop. Yep, back out onto the track he goes. Let's see what he can do. That low first gear, it takes forever to get going. Turns three and four once again off of turn number four. Kyle Matthews sees the checkered flag, and let's see what he gets. A 212.91. believe that's second quickest. Second quickest, Jessica Shelton's 212.83. So not that far off her teammate. So far, S3 Motorsports, one and two out of, out of four drivers. <sighs> Boy, you think we've just wake, woken up or something out of today. <laughs> yeah. Now Matthews parks it behind the wall, and now it's time for Jay Jefferson in the number 11, who got his win at Auto Club to qualify himself for the All-Star race. Kind of ironic the 09 and the 11 qualified back-to-back. -back. You mentioned that Auto Club race. They finished 1-2 in that race. Yep. Yeah. Solid run, staying right within the black, the, the blackness of the of the uh, turns. There, green flag is out. You can see where the grip is on the racetrack. And he stays right within it too. It's 
Oh, nearly got the... I think he may have gotten the wall there just a little bit. I think he might have just kissed it. Definitely heard the scrape there. We'll see how we'll see how it'll affect his car as he heads down into heads down into turns one and two. Doesn't seem to be affecting him too much. Ooh, he got really loose there. I don't pick red nicely. Well, he got really loose coming in. Let's hope it doesn't affect him. Uh, number 11, I believe, is out of JJ Motorsports. Somewhere around there, I think. I think that's the name of the team. Good pit stop. Let's see where see where he can qualify as he comes back around. Two Another two point nine. That's third quickest so far. JJ Motorsports. Yep, third quickest, right behind Kyle Matthews by four hundredths of a second. Well, he could. He for all we know, that could have been a decent uh, lap to com compete with Jess if if J if Jeff if J didn't get loose and turn three and four coming to pit lane. Up next is the number 12 of J.T. Bryant. Now, J.T. Bryant, again, one of those, one of those top nine teams. He's also the only young motorsports representative in the uh, young, yeah, he's out of four cars. He's the only young motorsports representative and, uh, and, no, I lied. He's the second. Here's, there's two. I forgot about Nathan Hudson. <laughs> Hudson also, another one of those top nine. But JT Bryant in that Ford Mustang supporting some new colors for the All-Star Race. Let's see what lap he can do as he takes the green flag. What do you think, Kyle? Yeah, it's just, you mentioned, you know, two of the four young motorsports cars. Um, you know, we've been documenting the uh, struggles of Dylan Young, who's the defending series champion. It's hard to believe, you know, you have an all-star race and the defending G series champion's not even in it. Yep. Yeah, but this 12 car, I mean, you know, in the top 10 in, po in, the top 10 in points, so, uh, you know, it's had speed, you know, has contended for a couple of wins, just hadn't got there yet, like a lot of drivers. So, wow! I just see on the stop on the stopwatch here, JT Bryant had the fastest first lap of all of the other cars so far. Here it comes, coming to pit lane. If he can make this flawlessly, and there he does. And boy, he's in quite a hurry. Lawless pit stop. 
Back out onto the racing surface he goes. Wonder where this is gonna put him if he doesn't make any mistakes. He'll hug at the bottom line. Oh, woo, got close to the wall there coming out of four checkered flag. The top wow. of the chart, 211. 211.95, almost a second faster than Jessica Shelton. Wow, he's definitely got to be excited about that one. Oh, definitely, you mentioned that he had the fastest first lap, and he was able to able to keep that going throughout the entire run, including the pit stops. A great job by JT Bryant. Yeah. Very good and very clever. JT Bryant comes down. He's gonna pull his car behind the wall, and we're gonna get ready for the next car to take their take their take his time on onto the racetrack. Here, I him there, and here we have Jordan Lopez. Again, another one of those nine drivers who got in without a win being the top in points. We'll see what kind of run Lopez can have. This will be his first all-star race appearance. So he's kind of like an all-star rookie. Think that'll have any, you think the pressure, you think he feels any type of pressure? Ah, uh, there could be a little <laughs> bit. I don't know if there's more pressure, just excitement, you know. I'm fear a rookie being in this kind of race. Yep. Second season of the Budweiser All Pro Series, but very first ever All Star race. So, this is the first time he's even ever had to actually try to qualify like this. Most of these drivers are, even though, even if they're not rookies, most of these drivers is their first time trying like this. Takes the green flag to start his lap here. Enters turns three and or one and two a little higher than normal, but man, he kind of held it on that inside line. Off of turn number four. Completing his first lap here. He's going to have to make his pit stop this time. See what he can do. He's staying up high. So far, so good. Here comes in the pit lane. Oh, can he turn it? Oh, he gets off into the oh grass boy. there. Oh. Man, had a... It's looking good until he clipped the grass. That's... A... Yep, there's no, uh... No grip out in the grass, and it just cost him as he was going full throttle. He tried to save it. Unfortunately for the 17 car, though... He'll, uh, second car to crash so far in qualifying. So that will make him 19th overall for the All-Star race. Ah, here comes our winner from Rockingham, Jack Halleck in the number 22. Seems he's taken a lesson from Jessica Shelton using the, uh, concrete there to help get up to speed. It's a different look for the 22 this week. Quite a few different, uh... Quite a few different paint schemes for the All-Star race. Yeah, first. And I'm kind of glad. Pretty interesting to see some special schemes. We'll see what he can do. Ah, 
Heads down off into turn three and four for the first time. Keeps it in. Keeps it in. Uh, keeps it in the gas. Completes his first lap here. Boy, you gotta stop being so quiet. <laughs> Uh oh, oh, boy. oh, there he goes. Back up. The same, looked like the same thing that happened to the aid of Rob Evans. Just, uh, kind of lost it there in the middle of three and four, running the high side. Yep. Yeah. Maverick Racing Australia, number 22. Fortunately for him, he's not able to complete his attempt. He's backed it into the wall. Remember, like we said, the turns three and four have been really loose for these guys when they've been trying to get on the pit road. Here's uh, Benjamin Miles in the 25. He is our Daytona 500 winner from this season. Yep, at Hertz Racing Chevrolet. I believe that's the team. I believe that's the company that Benjamin Miles works for. Also, sponsor William Byron in a few in some races this season over in the uh, Cup Series. Well, that's gotta be fun too. Benjamin it's Miles been... holds it right up against the outside line there. It's been kind of a up and down season for Benjamin Miles so far. The first couple of races, uh, you know, he was the points leader, and since then, I Actually, mean, it's he is the of... points leader. He's the points oh, yeah. leader again by four points over that twenty-two, I believe. Uh, over the twenty-two, and he just took the points lead back at a uh, at Dover. Okay, thank you for reminding me about that. Um, like I said, but the first first couple of races, I mean, he was on top of the points, and then next few after that ran into some problems. And and, and as you mentioned, he's back in the points lead. So, uh, well, boy. Oh, oh, boy, here it goes. Oh. oh. Benjamin Miles catches the inside. It's not that easy to get on the pit road here. No one has it. That's three straight drivers to have issues here during their qualifying lap. So uh, don't know if there's something on the tr don't know if the track isn't completely cleared off or what. But this is uh, kind of weird. Uh, it's just these these drivers trying really hard to get on the pit road, trying to get a good lap. Here comes 34 Sebastian Kukulan. His win, okay. oh yeah, he won at Infineon. His win at Infineon, or Sonoma, as people get pissed at me for saying Infineon. His Sears Sonoma. Po it's Sears Point. Yep. <laughs> His win at Sears Point, Sonoma, Infineon, whatever you want to call it. He uh, got him into this all-star race, as he's going to begin to make his lap. Our second car, sponsored by Monster Energy tonight. Things look good so far, but yep, going so down the get, back straightaway. See if you can get down pit road. Something that a lot of guys have struggled with here. Nope, not time for his pit stop yet. He's got to complete the slap. Seems like the fours have been having a bit of an advantage, other than the couple that have wrecked. <laughs>
bit out of the groove there, almost into the loose stuff. We'll see if that will hurt his time as he gets ready to come on pit road. Definitely a rookie this season, as you can tell by the rookie stripes. Let's see how he can get on the pit road here. And he gets down there nicely. Yes, he does. Might be a little far ahead, up in his pit stall, but he's definitely within his pit stall, so we're going to work. Pit stop looked pretty smooth there. We'll see what kind of time he can get. It's down off in the turns three and four. Right around the bottom of the track. Sebastian Kukulon, he is going to take a checkered flag. Wow, that's two tw almost a two twelve flat there. He's gonna be second quickest. Is that second? I think that was oh yeah, because that's fast I was faster than uh as I was faster than Justice time, so yeah, you're right. Second quickest for Sebastian Kukulov. It's an impressive lap time set by JT Bryant. Can anybody top that that lap? Yep, we'll have to definitely wait and see. Brings it down pit lane and gonna take it behind the wall. Keith Batson, next up, and that number 39, he, uh, another one of those drivers, top nine in points without a win. We'll see what he can do in this Ford, another rookie in the All-Star race. It's a rookie in this series, at least in the All-Star race, but, yeah. Keith Batson, a longtime veteran of the uh, Castrol GTX Cup Series, and it's been a part of some other series as well over in the NRSL. Yes, he has. Take the green flag to start his lap, to start his qualifying attempt. Pretty good, trying to stay in the line there. Got a good runoff of turn two. Got two, three, and four. Very good that time. Yep, these fours have been pretty quick. Let's see what he can do. If he's going to have to pit this time by. Oh, he got a little too oh, loose. Boy. I saw that. He, he, he got loose. Kept it out of the wall, though. So nice job there by Keith Batson. Absolutely, but I believe he has the tire down. KAB Racing Enterprises. Keith Batson, unfortunately, unable to finish his qualifying attempt here today. But great job on keeping it off the wall. Yeah, save the race car there. That's the most important part. Yep, I believe his uh, passenger side front tire is down. So they're going to take a look at that Chevy. Or, excuse me, his Ford. My bad, yeah, Ford. Yeah, Ford. Yeah, Keith and, Batson. Uh, Keith Batson, big Ford guy. Yep, and uh, see what they can do. As here comes Alex Miller, our winner from Kansas. Boy, I love the paint scheme on this 44 car. 
I know I had a lot to choose from here. Excuse me. He had a lot to choose from, and he went with the Tide ride for the all-star race. Look at him going a bit unorthodox. He's going to ride, that, ride the outside lane, maybe have that help him get up to speed, take the longest way around the track. I didn't know you had influence over the, uh, the paint scheme choosing. I guess you just like that 44 car so much and <laughs> that, that Tide ride. Well, I gave him a couple of suggestions. Ooh, might have scraped the wall there as he takes the green flag. Don't think it'll affect his car, though. He saw him ride the outside lane, getting up to speed, so a bit of an unorthodox uh, super speedway style. Maybe he thinks that'll help him help him get up to speed faster. Well, we're going to see super speedway type racing here in the All-Star race, so why not? That's true. Completes his first lap. Oh, did he get, does he just get a little tight there? It looked like he might have just got either a little loose from the apron or he just got really tight in one and two. Looked like he got tight right there. May have pushed that, may have scraped the wall just a little bit. All right, we'll see how the 44 can get on a pit road here. Nice job getting down pit road. Pit crew going to work. Good stop, good stop. Tied Chevrolet coming off of pit road. I don't know. I think him getting tight in turns one and two, the last lap, might really hurt him. I'd be surprised if it didn't. I mean, you got to be flawless around here. Yeah, like like JT Bryant, flawless. Should be a decent lap, though, all things considered. Let's see what he gets. Comes cross line, takes the checkered flag. At 2.13. Two yep, that's going to put him uh, fifth, I think, if I've got my numbers correct. Right behind Kyle Matthews. No, excuse me, right behind Jay Jefferson. Sorry. Right behind Jay Jefferson. We'll have the official... We're, we're not going to try to guess where that place is in. We're, we'll have the official rundown at the end of the qualifying. <laughs> That's a good thing for the both of us there. Yep. Now we have Nathan Hudson... Another young motorsports representative, the guy who usually joins me in the commentary booth for the All-Star Race. We'll see if he's available. We may have to do Skype to do the All-Star Race if he's available to do so, the three of us. He's got, once again, looks like he's taken, just like the 44 car did, the outside lane trying to help him get up to speed. Another paint scheme I like. A bit of a throwback to Mark Martin back in the mid-90s. Yeah. This primary scheme for this season, that's the scheme he said he definitely wanted to run. We'll see here as he's coming to take the green flag. Running a middle to high groove. Got through three and four really well. He did. He's going through here pretty good. 
One and two, about the middle lane, right where the grip is at. And we'll see what he can do when he comes down pit lane. A little bit lower, not running quite the highest line. That might that might help him a little bit here. He definitely pushed it coming to pit road, you could tell. And it looked like it paid off for him. Got on pit road right awfully smoothly. See how the pit stop goes. Looks pretty clean. It's his teammate is at the top of the charts right now. That's true, it is. Pretty clean for Nathan Hudson. He's going to take the low lane around, turns one and two, trying to get up to speed. Looks like he's going to try to stay in that low lane. Then decides to run the high lane in three and four, trying to get the grip out of the racetrack. Let's see where it puts him. Ooh, just kissed the wall out of turn four. Takes the checkered flag. A 2-12-72. It's a little bit off his teammate, but still a pretty solid lap. About second almost off his teammate. Gonna slot him, I believe, in front of both Jessica Shelton and Kyle Matthews. I just don't know where. <laughs> Not until the end. We'll know at the end. Seems so far that the Fords are dominating this qualifying so far. 12 to 34, now the 60 running a good lap. As he goes behind the wall. Up next, I believe, the 70 of James Qualls. As we mentioned earlier, here's another Evan Gardner Motorsports car. It's another guy that's uh, been knocking on the door of Victory Lane. Oh, yeah, he's nearly won at, uh, I believe it was Kansas. I believe, yeah, yeah, he almost won at Kansas. Uh, he almost won at Vegas where he qualified in the pole as well, but I think both times pit strategy really screwed him over. It was either that or it was actually his pit crew. <laughs> Walls off of turn number four to come get the green flag to start his qualifying attempt. What a morale boost it would be for this number 70 team if he were to somehow qualify good for this race. Oh, definitely. If we were to possibly win the All-Star race, that'd be up for anybody in this series, anybody that's in this race. Yep. Yeah. Ten, uh, ten thousand, no, it's a million Monopoly dollars and a fake currency. <laughs> Bitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it goes, all we can afford. Yeah, it goes to the winner. Not to mention bragging rights as, they, as they'll get ready for the Coca-Cola 600, where we'll be back to the normal, uh, the normal style uh, package for these cars. And the budget we have here is not much better than the YWC budget. Oh, James, oh, James, James, James! Oh, boy. Oh, we uh. got... He got just a little too high, I think. Got into the loose stuff. Just like we, it's been happening a lot tonight. These drivers have been trying to take the highest line possible so they can dart it into the corners. Or so they can dart it into pit road. And that time it just didn't work out for him. For, fortunately for James, he's unable to finish his qualifying attempt. But with, the, with this being like a super speedway, I'm sure he won't be in the back for very long. No. It doesn't really matter where you start with this uh, with this package, but you know, but there is some prestige to, to uh, starting up front, though. So you always want to, you know, try to get what you can get. 
Now, I don't remember exactly where Zachary Stoltz got his win at. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, darn it. I don't remember. So Phoenix? No. That was J.J. Roberts at Phoenix. But I know he got a win. I'm sure the graphic will tell us after his lap. Yeah. But, oh, it's Talladega. Talladega. <laughs> I believe he beat Cole Deaver at Talladega to get to get the win there. So, Tal so Zachary Stoltz is in the All-Star race with his win at Talladega. He starts his qualifying attempt. Let's see what he can do. Looks almost like a Mopar scheme for that number 72, but it's not a yeah, Mopar. It really does. GoPro, the GoPro Chevrolet Camaro, right there in the uh, middle of the corner through three and four, coming off of turn four to complete his first lap. Looks pretty good to me, but we'll see what happens on his pit stop. Oh, he caught, I think he caught the apron there. You see him catch the apron? Oh, yeah. I was going to drift up into the wall there because of that. Did a nice job of hanging on to that car. Good job to hang on, but that's going to really hurt his lap time. Gets on the pit road nicely, though. Nice and fast. Possibly a little slow on the on the, the rear of the car for the rear tire changer there. But we'll see what happens as he comes back out onto the racetrack. Down the back straight away he goes. Not being so quiet. We, I, I understand this is qualifying and it's boring. But don't be quiet, Kyle. <laughs> Zachary Stolf is going to come across the line. Checkered flag. 212.99. Puts him right in the middle of the grid. Basically, so far, Z Motorsports Chevrolet Camaro won at Talladega. And he's about middle of the grid here. The all-star race is going to be three segments. A three-segment all-star race will have a 40-lap segment, a 20-lap segment, and then a 10-lap shootout. That's how the all-star race is going to work this season in the Budweiser All-Pro Series. And I really can't wait for that to happen because it's going to be exciting. No, definitely. Stoltz pulls his car behind the pit wall as we get ready for the next car to go out onto the racetrack. That will be the number 77 of Daniel Gilbert. Outback Steakhouse on the 77 here. And... Let's see where he can drive that Outback car to place on the grid here. Former driver from Michael Norman Motorsports in the uh, old Hershey's Cup series. They head on down uh, off of turn number four. He's going to see the green flag and start his attempt. Got through, uh, got through the corner pretty decent. Let's see, he's going to complete his first lap. He's going to have to 
Get ready to come down pit road this time. Bye. Watch him fly by. Always love that shot, especially at a full, full field. Yeah, I agree. Let's see, he's getting ready to come down pit road here. Down pit road, pretty good. Now see how the pit stop goes. Seems pretty flawless to me as he's now get as he's now nailing that throttle, making sure that the wheels grip as it comes off the pit road back onto the racing surface. Right to the bottom of the racetrack where he needs to be, the quickest way around. Middle of the track. Comes off of turn number four, keeps it off the wall. Daniel Gilbert's going to cross the line. He's going to run a 212.55 for Daniel Gilbert. Mm, pretty good lap right there. Going to slot him also in about the middle of the field. Waiting in the wings is another driver who made it in via the top nine in the point standings without a win. Michael Turner getting his Red Bull car ready to go as, Gil as Gilbert comes back across, coasting his way around the racetrack. Another rookie getting ready to make his run in Michael Turner as the 77 car pulls it off into the garage area. There's the Red Bull Toyota, like you mentioned. Yeah. Looks a bit like Scott Speed's former ride in the eight, when, it, when, that, when this was on the 82 car back in the day. Mm-hmm. Same, uh, same with Brian Vickers back in 2011, I want to say. I believe so, yeah. Comes close to the wall as he takes the green flag to start his qualifying attempt. Ooh, he scraped it going off into turn one here. I think he got just a little too high there. Oh, he's the wall again. He's pushing that car. Completes his first lap. Now let's see how we can get on. Let's see how we can get on the pit road this time. By. He's definitely pushing that car. That's for sure. I've seen quite a few guys push the car in this session, and it hasn't worked out too well for him. Well, he pushed it again. Got oh, right into the wall. Yeah. There he goes. Well, crash in his attempt. JJ Motorsports. It's a shame to see, but really can't say I'm surprised by that. Pushed his car, trying to get a good qualifying effort. It's an A for effort, but unfortunately. He will not be able to finish his lap as we get ready for the next car to go out. Which is the 81 of J.J. Roberts, our winner at ISM Speedway.
Right now, the current top five is uh, JT Bryant, Sebastian Kukulon, Daniel Gilbert, Nathan Hudson, and Jessica Shelton. We'll see. We'll see where JJ Roberts will cycle in here. Another rookie and another Ford. J.J. Roberts qualifies good that then four could possibly sweep the top four spots. Look at him as he's able to keep that car a bit down to the low side. I don't know what it has been about these fours, but they've been pretty good. Looks like they've got it figured out here. At least most of them. Comes through the middle line. Completes his first lap. He's going to have to make his pit stop this time by. <laughs> Let's see. So far, so good. Great entry to pit road there for the 81 car. Ooh, great pit stop for the 81 car. Let's yes, see. It if, was. Let's see as it takes him 20 years to get up to speed here. Yo, know, the back straight away up against the wall. Middle of the racetrack as he heads down off into turns three and four. Misses the wall coming to the checkered flag. JJ Roberts finishes his lap a 212.03, and that slots him in third fastest in the qualifying order. Which means right now, top three are Fords. J.T. Bryant, Sebastian Kukulon, and now J.J. Robert. Didn't really expect to see like one manufacturer dominate this qualifying session, so this the, is quite the surprising. Fords have been, the Fords have been dominated qualifying all season long. Yeah, they, I mean, they have, but I mean, this is, you know, a different, different aero package. I thought it would be a bit of an equalizer, but... And again, we've seen a lot of cars push it and over push it, so we won't we won't really know much of it. And our final car to go out for qualifying is the number ninety four of Preston Plord. Driving for DPI, which I'm assuming is Dog Pound Incorporated, Shane Lake's team. Is Pepsi man car, or Pepsi car for the 94. Got his win at Las Vegas. A surprise fuel mileage win for Preston Plord. Comes off of turn number four. He's going to see the green flag to start his, to start his qualifying attempt. So, so far we've had about a total of six cars, I'm assuming. Seven. Seven cars crash or have an incident in this race. Will, will Preston be able to be, will Preston be number eight or will he actually complete his lap time? That is definitely the question. Well, I think session's been quite the challenge. Yeah, it definitely has. Preston, Lord. 
completes his first lap. Now comes the treacherous pit stop. Wow, that's actually one of the fastest times I've seen for a first lap. That was all a little bit faster than than JT Bryant. Perfect entry onto pit road. It's all going to come down to the pit crew. Oh no, the right rear tire tire changer. He's a little behind. I don't know if he dropped the lug nuts or, or something, but he had a little bit of a bobble there. Oh, and that's really going to cost Preston. Man, he had one of the fastest first laps, and that little bit of a mistake on pit road could cost him dearly. Yeah, that's entire qualifying. You know, it's a team effort. The only time the pit crews play a part in it. Comes through turns three and four in our final car to qualify. He's going to take the checkered flag and Preston Plored. A 2.13.55. Man, what a fall off. That's going to slot him in 11th place out of the 13 cars that I've made times. Man, that just goes to show. <laughs> You're right. It's a team effort, and Preston's pit team, I'm sure he's a little upset with that on the radio right now. One person that's happy to see that is JT Bryant. He will be on the pole. That's right. JT Bryant has secured the pole position for the All-Star race here at Charlotte. As we will get ready, as, he, as Preston pulls up behind the wall, we will go through your starting grid. JT Bryant has secured the pole. Sebastian Kukulan is second, J.J. Roberts third, Daniel Gilbert fourth, Nathan Hudson in fifth, Jessica Shelton in sixth, Kyle Matthews in seventh, Jay Jefferson will start eighth, Zachary Stoltz in ninth, Alex Miller will round out the top ten, Preston in eleventh, Trent Dunham has fallen back to twelfth, Cole Deaver, the last driver to who made the time, he will be. He will start 13th. And then the drivers that crashed. We have Michael Turner in 14th, James Qualls in 15th, Keith Batson in 16th, Benjamin Miles 17th, Jack Hollick in 18th, Jordan Lopez in 19th, and Rob Evans rounds out the top 20. Well, it rounds out the field. So the All Star Open will consist of two segments. It will be a two 20-lap segments, and the winner of the first segment gets, a, gets an automatic spot in the All-Star race, and the winner of the second segment gets a, gets a spot in the All-Star race as well, leaving the third and final spot up to the fan vote. So, Kyle, we've had an interesting qualifying session tonight. I'm ready for the practice session that's going to come later. This has definitely been a great time tonight. Well, it definitely has been, and you now we saw our, we saw the issues that some drivers had in in qualifying. You know, let's just hope uh, we don't have we don't see as many during the race. True. For Michael Norman and Kyle Matthews, this has been brought to you by the NNS Ciray Offline Racing at its best, and we say until we meet again. <laughs>